right, so let me give you a rundown on this engine. This is uh, a 383 that I assembled oh, several months ago for uh, the local machine shop that I use. And this is a four bolt main block. It's dated according to the casting number. Uh, the last three digits is a 010 block, which basically GM used this block from 1969 to 1979 in an assortment of vehicles. This one has a casting stamp of, I believe it was November the 17th of 1973. This one um, has been has been stroked to a 383 cubic inch engine, which most uh, small block Chevys, uh, 350s, excuse, excuse me, uh, have a 3.48 inch stroke. This one has a new cast Eagle crank, which is a 3.75 inch stroke. Um, underneath, the bottom end has been balanced. Um, nothing really fancy on this engine. They did put ARP main bolts in it. They used uh, the stock factory uh, main bolts, which for the horsepower and what we're doing with this is plenty good. The bottom end, as I said, it, it's, it, is, ro it is balanced. The rotating assembly has been balanced. Um, the box been clearanced uh, for the extra, the extra throw within the stroke. So um, the guy that bought this, it, he's putting it in a, uh, an early 60s model. I wanna say 62 or three Nova station wagon. And his primary function on this is going to be to drive it on the street, maybe take it every now and then to the, to the drags and, and uh, see what it'll do. I think he's, uh, he's shooting for roughly close to 500 horsepower. Uh, whether or not he gets it, I really don't know. This does have, uh, it's 30 over. It does have a set of Speed Pro Hyper Eutectic pistons in it. Um, anyway, all this assembly was done uh, several months ago. And my goal today is to try to get the cam to dial in. I've been fighting it for some reason, and I'm not real sure if it's the cam gears that I'm using. I've tried two different sets. Um, he, he bought a, a set that was kind of an off-brand, off which I typically don't use. But um, this, this set that's in here now, and with the degree wheel that I use, this thing, I use a, a large degree wheel, so so the it's very easy to uh, to dial this thing in as far as as precision. And uh, I got it to dial in. This this cam calls for a 106 uh, center line, and I got it to dial in on a 105, which tells me that I'm really really close. And that just could be some errors within setting up top dead center and getting my wheel locked in place. And as you can see, I've, I've tried a multitude uh, of ways to get this thing to dial in. So anyway, sit back and, uh, and let's see if we can get this thing put together. And as I do this, I'll go over some of the steps that I typically do on an engine. And you know, what I will say is I may not do it right, but this is how I've been able to do it. And I've had really good success uh, through the years with, with some of the stuff that I've put together. Okay. So. So, like I said earlier, this thing has been fighting me tooth and toenail to try to get this dialed in. And as you can see, I'm going to show a couple different ways to get absolute top dead center. But I've got dial indicator set up on the center of the piston. And you can turn your engine over clockwise to get this to come up. And you'll see it on the needle, but the problem is with the degree wheel I use, it's it's so large and the and can be so precise that you'll have kind of a pause when the piston actually comes up as the throw of the of the 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 crank journal will will roll over center that you can actually move this degree wheel a couple of degrees before you see movement on the needle. So. The other way to do this is with a piston stop, and I'm going to show this method as well. So basically, you bolt this piston stop on, and you just want to be careful as you're rolling this engine over so you don't cram your piston up into this stop. 
Um, this other dial indicator, I have it set up on the, the intake lifter and it's on the actual rail. It's not on the cup. So I'm getting pretty good movement here, but anyway, we'll set that up and I'm going to get kind of a, a rough in on my TDC with the dial indicator. Well, I guess I, I said I was now that uh, I put this piston stop in. So let me see if I can roll this backwards and get this out for now. I do know that my piston is slightly below the deck surface, roughly 20 some thousands, I believe I measured the other day. So we're gonna get this close by watching the old dial indicator come up. Should be getting very close. I've had this thing set to zero multiple times. All right, right there, I've moved it a little bit and the needle has froze. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna lock that in on a zero with my timing tab. And now I'm locked pretty good. So um, I'm gonna roll this thing counterclockwise a ways and I'm gonna reinstall the piston stop. get the piston stop put in. And now I'm going to go back into a clockwise motion until it stops and I'm right at 20. And now I'm gonna go back the other direction, counterclockwise and see where it hits the stop. It's getting close. Right there, I am at 15. So, and I should have marked this, which actually it's closer to 16. So as you can see with our mark here and here, that's 35 degrees. And if you divide that, then of course it's about 17 and a half. So what I'll do now is I'll count over 17 and a half and I'm just gonna put me a mark on this. Also, need to remove my piston stop we're going to see how close um how close we are with this dial indicator as well as this so let me come over and we'll go in halfway in between this and then we'll roll this over and then i'll set zero with the gauge all right set this out of the way we need 17 there's there's actually 19 there, so we can come back and put us a mark at two. And we're gonna put that on our on our needle at two degrees. And that should be absolute top dead center. Now I'm going to loosen, I say I was, I'm gonna loosen the crank nut here and we're gonna lock this bad boy down to zero. Perfect. All right, now that I got everything set up, everything's locked in, I've got absolute top dead center. And one other thing I'll do real quick is we will zero this dial indicator here. Now, the center line method, as I said earlier, is, is what we're gonna check the base event and we're going to roll the engine over clockwise until we get maximum lift which we should zero here because i've already done that once i get maximum lift i'm going to rotate counterclockwise back to about a hundred thousandths and then i'm going to go back to a counter or a, a clockwise direction back to fifty thousandths before maximum lift and the reason why you go past it at 100 and then go back is you take out any slacks that you have in your chain and your gears. This is all new stuff, so it shouldn't be too bad. So we're gonna roll it over. And this thing is a little bit jerky and if you've ever put an engine together. So there is maximum lift. Now we're gonna go counterclockwise back 100 thousandths or they're close there at. Now we're gonna go back to 50 before maximum lift. And 
we are sitting at 60. So you wanna jot that number down. Now we're gonna go 50 thousandths past max lift. And you see the gauge went up to max, the dial indicator, now we're coming back down and we are gonna hit 50. And that is 152. So when we do the math, 152 plus 60 equals 212. And then you divide that by two, we come up with 106, which is what the cam specs at. So now that we know that we're set on a 106 center line, the next thing we're gonna do is I wanna check the valve timing events. And according to the card, it says that the intake, when it opens six thousandths of an inch, we should see 38 degrees. So we're gonna roll this engine over in a clockwise manner. And we're at least gonna check the intake opening point and see if it's accurate. Like I said, once you see it start to raise open, which will be this, this dial indicator here, we're only gonna go to 6,000. So now that we know we're on the base circle of the cam, let me dial this in for sure to get absolute zero. And I'm gonna roll it over clockwise until it starts to open. And we're gonna hopefully be able to stop it at six thousandths. Okay, so we've got the valve open at six thousandths and we're at 38 degrees, which is exactly where the cam card calls. So now we're going to go completely around until we are six thousandths before it fully closes. And we're gonna record that again. And I think what I was doing wrong earlier is I wasn't accounting for this degree wheel being 360 degrees because it is marked um, zero to 180 on both sides of the of the wheel. So we're gonna get six thousandths before close, which that is very close. So we're gonna come down here and we're gonna look at this wheel and we're gonna come back this direction, which 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, is exactly where we need to be per the cam card. So I'm gonna call this one good. Um, that's probably one of the first times I've actually checked the valve timing events. And uh, um, I, may got to, I may get that wrong, but honestly, I, I think after what I've read and I've researched, that you come back most of the time i just check the center line and i'm pretty good shape but this one's dialed in so i think the next thing i'm going to do is uh i'm going to put his old timing chain back on it and i'm gonna see if i can get this thing to come back in and uh i'm gonna check everything off and then uh, i'll come back and then i'll set up and then we'll start finish assembling this thing so all right so what i didn't show you was the two days prior to today of messing with this thing, trying to get it dialed in. I don't I don't know if I've just mentally had uh, brain lapse or what, but I was able to install the adjustable, um, the, the adjustable cam, cam gear, and I was able to get it dialed in on the center line. Everything seems to be in good shape. So now I am going to try to finish assembling this engine, uh, starting with the timing gear cover. And I've never used one with this cutout in it. So hopefully it doesn't leak. But one thing this will do is I'll be able to go ahead and assemble the cover, put the oil pan, oil pump, oil pan, and all that stuff in. And then I'll be able to check, um, I'll be able to install my cam button and get the in play for the camshaft set a little bit easier with this one, I think. So.
Okay, here's another tech tip, something else that you can do, especially if you got kids. Go steal their Play-Doh. Works really, really good. I'll use this a couple of different times on different applications, but we're gonna put a little glob here on the pickup for the oil pump. And then I'm gonna grab a little bit of oil so the Play-Doh won't stick to my pan. I'm gonna check the clearance on this. Is my intention. So we can see. We can get fancy and put a straight edge across here and measure down to the block, but at the end of the day, either will work. I've done both ways. And we're gonna stick his thought that thing had trash in it. It's a new pan, it should be pretty clean, so hopefully this thing will go down. Oh great, guess what? Wrong oil pan. It's got the wrong dipstick side. Have it. That's gonna stop us. But anyway, same principle. Doesn't matter. I can check it here. Lift it off, and as you can see, we're quite a bit of ways, half an inch, roughly. How it's flattened that out. Um, it's probably not gonna hurt anything. Um, especially since this is an oversized capacity on your plant, the oil pan. So I just got to get him to get the right pan now. So that might So that's about all I can do on this build for today. Um, I don't want to roll the engine over anymore to check the valve to piston clearance by putting this other head on until I get my timing tab locked in. And I had to stop on the, the installation of the balancer because I once again put the cart before the horse and realized that I don't have a cam button and a lock plate for the cam. So. I'll have to get those ordered. I usually keep those in stock and for some reason, I, I guess I've just ran myself out. So anyway, um, I'll leave it with you at that, but uh, I'll leave in closing if you, if uh, it's nice to be able to spread the knowledge and, and like I said before, I may not know all the ways to do it, but this is how I do things. So, um, you know, get somebody, if you know some young kids that, that like getting involved with it, get them involved. Um, share that knowledge and, and just, just start building. So I'll see you next time.